On this episode of Dude, I Love or Hate My New Ride, we truly have a brand new ride. Behind me is a 2020 Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road Edition. And this video series is all about you guys. We talk to the real owners of real vehicles and get to know them really, really well from the real world perspective. Lee, thank you for bringing the car. Yes, sir. So tell me, why did you choose this RAV4 TRD off-road? I've had a Toyota Tacoma, had the 4Runner. Okay. Wasn't using them quite as much as I thought I would in the mountains and such. Wanted a little bit better gas mileage, but I still do quite a bit of uh, dirt road. That's kind of what got me started down this path. I got a family, you know, got the USB ports, all that fan, fun stuff. So. Okay, so this is kind of a ne new, new generation RAV4. Yeah. But for 2020, they're introducing this new trim level, TRD off-road. It wasn't there before, right? Correct. I was looking at the adventures. Uh, I stumbled across some of this, uh, the TRD off-road, and it has the same stuff that the adventure has, but a uh, few uh, extra features. Well, let's kind of walk around it and uh, just, well, let's go directly to the tires and suspension, right? Because that's kind of where the meat of this is, right? Right, that is, that is and, and that's uh, usually the first thing I try to upgrade if I'm able to yeah. is wheels and tires and suspension. I mean, that's, that's where you get the most bang for your buck. I like that they shrink the uh, wheel size a little bit so you can get a higher aspect ratio. Okay. Uh, when you are driving a lot of dirt, you do uh, get a bit of vibration, especially that washboard stuff. Yeah. And this kind of helps dampen just a little bit of that. This is an 18 inch wheel. Correct. Uh, first of all, it's unique. The design of it is unique for yes. the CRD off-road, which is pretty interesting. And then the Wild Peak uh, all-terrain tire, which is pretty aggressive, right? How, you, you tell me about the snowstorm. How did this do? Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, uh, I've had several other snow vehicles before i had a gmc pickup i've had a, like i said a tacoma 4runner and this is my favorite vehicle i've ever driven in the snow including my subarus i've had some subarus too okay so that's interesting and the shocks uh, toyota says are tuned specifically for this model so you you can notice that i guess what they have is a progressive dampening system okay and when you're hitting all the little stuff it just kind of floats over but you can still corner. I like to see an aggressive tire because usually these off-road edition vehicles, especially crossovers, come with kind of an old season, right? right. Not, not something this aggressive. And this is obviously an all-wheel drive system. Um, Toyota calls it torque vectoring, right? Have you noticed, have you gone rallying yet? <laughs> I haven't, I've been trying to uh, do the proper break-in that's recommended by Toyota. Okay. I picked it up with two miles and I wanted to be able to do the proper procedures stepping in. After that, I just hadn't had the chance. <laughs> right, right. So how many miles do you have? And how long now, have you had it? I've had it for about a month. Okay. I'm just shy of a thousand now. Well, thank you for letting me drive. Oh, no problem. This car is so new. Usually we get cars to test before they're actually on sale. Mm -hmm. But this particular TRD off-road, we haven't had a chance to uh, drive yet. This is really cool. You know how pickup trucks have these off-road packages and they're really good off-road, right? But a side effect of it is, is that the softer suspension is actually makes it more comfortable. Right. On road. So I, I want to see exactly how, how this compares. Sometimes that's not always the case. Like if you try and lift something yourself, Yes. Uh, you might go a little bit stiffer than you need to. When I proposed getting the TRD off-road, um, when I proposed that option to my wife, yes, she's thinking, "Oh, great! Now, now it's going to ride horribly oh, yeah, and I see. everything." But quite, quite the opposite. Yeah, over these expansion joints, you know, a heavy-duty truck would be bouncing all the way around. Uh -huh. You know, mm -hmm. but this nice crossover and the, and the tuning is just right. 2019 Toyota is introducing this new, you know, all new generation of RAV4, and it's a 2.5 liter, and Toyota rates it at uh, 203 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque, I believe, and it's an eight-speed attached to it. Correct. How come um, you didn't go for like a hybrid model? Because they offer a lot of hybrid options as well. Uh, once again, it came to simplicity. Like I said, I, I drive a bit of dirt. Uh -huh. uh, washboard has a tendency to um, rattle everything. Rattle out. <laughs> everything. Yes, and I, 
I don't know if the hybrids are there yet to handle that. So you wanted something a little bit more robust, you know, something that you're kind of familiar with. Right? Correct. So let's kind of look on the inside and check out some of those features as well. Okay. All right, so once again, for 2019 and 2020, they redesigned the interior completely. What do you think about this? I definitely prefer the layout. The older ones had odd positioning for for these cup holders. Okay, okay. So if, you, if you've got kids and you're, you're trying to stuff their extra cups in there and everything, it, it just didn't work out right. They created a larger tray, which is very useful because this is where you also plug in for Android Auto if you have it. Some of the additions, if you want to upgrade, will give you the wireless charging here. Okay. I didn't see a point in that for me since I do run Android. Okay. So I have to be plugged in anyways. Just, just plug it in, okay. Well, let's fire it just, up and just kind of see how it comes to life. So there's a screen in the center gauge cluster. Little accent thing that they added, like let's say I go into eco mode, now everything turns green. If I go sport, everything goes red. Uh, normal as just white. So uh, mud and sand. Rock and dirt. And it so, shows you kind of how the power is distributed. You know, cruise control, you got your kind of adaptive cruise feature, mm -hmm. lane keep uh, feature. It's one of the reasons I got it was uh, Toyota has all these extra safety features that they've created across their entire line. Everything uh, from their, their lowest base model. Yeah, the safety system. That's yeah, their, yeah. The, their safety system. And I, I really like that because I don't think safety should be a luxury item. And also these driving modes, have you played around with this much or just kind of left it? A little bit. I've, okay. I've played around with it a little bit. Uh, running in the eco mode, uh, you can definitely tell a difference there and I've run a full tank through. Okay. And it did get a bit got a bit better gas mileage when I did that. Okay. Um, I ran in the snow mode because we did have that snowstorm that came nice. through. And uh, that worked out fantastic. What was the fuel economy you saw? Did you check it at the pump or just kind of the trip meter? Uh, so far, I've pretty much just used the trip meter. Okay. I've been averaging about 28 and a half. Well, that's pretty good. I don't think you'll see that number in the 4Runner. No, no. <laughs> I, was getting, I was getting uh, about 16 and a half, 17 and a half was what I was averaging. So I see, I see where you're going. You, yeah. you want a little bit more efficiency there. Correct. Yeah, nice. The eco mode will then limit where the ventilation goes. So if I'm the only one in the car, only the fans above and around me are running. It doesn't blow on the on the kids' fans in the back. Okay, so it's gonna save some energy, I guess. And you have uh, heated and cooled seats for the front. Yeah, that's part of the uh, weather package. And what else is part of it is the heated wiper blades. Oh, okay. So the older armrests, they they used to slide forward and backward. So if you had anybody who's trying to lean on it, it would just snap out on you. Now they switched over to a stationary one and it is way better this way. <laughs> Very cool. Well, let's check out the back, the back seats and, and, the, tr and the trunk area. Okay. So compared to your 2015, is this a little bit more space or how does that work? I think it is a little bit more space. Uh, my girls definitely like okay. it a lot more and we're able to fit three across now okay. with their little booster seats and one in the middle not in a booster seat. Uh, she's old enough to not worry about it. Now they also included little sensors. Oh, for it. the so, seat belts? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't, it, that is a fantastic little feature where you're not having to see if anybody's uh, Skimping un the system. Unbuckled. <laughs> right, right. Are we there yet? We can't leave until you put your seatbelt on. <laughs> okay, let me click it. Do you see that? There you go. I noticed also rubber floor mats. It's really useful. I don't know if you ever look at some of these aftermarket ones. They kind of work sometimes, even if they're, you know, the laser cut or whatever. These fit perfectly. All right, let's check out the trunk. And did you specifically go for this color? It happened to be the one that had the features that okay. I wanted. Okay. And my last 4Runner was the same color, so I, I, I wasn't opposed to it. <laughs> okay, nice. It worked out nice. It looks kind of stealthy, you know, just kind of, you're flying, you know, on the radar, I guess. R right, aside from the one chrome strip that they put. <laughs> 
Okay, so they got a cargo cover here. Mm -hmm. um, this is interesting. On the back of the seats, it's rubberized material. If you don't have the liner, what's interesting is this is reversible. So if you're wanting this solid surface, if you're hauling anything, okay, I see. and don't want to tear up your carpet, um, you can just flip it over and utilize that instead. All right, nice. There's a power outlet, 110 volt and 12 volt. That's pretty useful. And those outlets aren't something that was available um, in the Tacomas, for instance. Okay. Uh, they still haven't put USB ports in the back for the kiddos. Okay. And, and this one, that, and this one has and, that. And it does. Yeah. It does. Uh, this is a little bit more family friendly oriented in, in some ways. This is something different that they added as well. A couple of uh, handles, huh? It, yeah, and it's supposed to sense if you pull down on it. It's supposed to start. Yep. Maybe it, it doesn't start. like us right now. It doesn't like us right now. I might have uh, done something okay. with it. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Another interesting point about the TRD off-road package here, they didn't lift it any, right? The ride height is basically the same. It's the same as the Adventure. Okay. Okay, running over this ice patch. Yeah, it's super, super smooth. It's nice. And I think the tires, like you said, the tires, there's a little bit more sidewall maybe. Mm -hmm. A little squishier. So you don't think you're gonna upgrade these tires anytime soon? Or no, I, I think I'm actually gonna stick it stock for a while. Is there anything you don't like after owning it for about a month or what, what, what were some of the dislikes? There, there was a little bit of a surprise okay. um, that I stumbled across and that is the lack of the uh, toe eyelets. If let's say you end up in a ditch, yeah. which hopefully you're not going to, but it does happen from time to time, yeah. or if you need to tow it, they don't have the standard toe eyelet access On this in model. the front. Uh, correct. So up in the bumper, you usually have a little square access port right Somewhere around here. here. Okay. Yeah, that you you would pop out, and there is a uh, basically a threaded nut um, that's welded into your yeah yeah your yeah, body. yeah yeah. And, and you could put like basically screw like an eye an eye hook. Yeah, yeah. an eye hook. Yeah. Uh, straight on in. There isn't one, and they also made underneath flush. There's like a flush panel, yeah. And there, there's no hooks down there either. Okay. And you, anything else that kind of popped out at you? No transmission dipstick. Yeah, that was the other odd thing. It's a sealed transmission unit. So you cannot check transmission fluid? Correct. Well, hopefully, I mean, these new crossovers, I mean, they're meant to go at least 100,000 miles, maybe more, right, mm -hmm. before any major services like that. Uh, correct. They, they say it's a lifetime. I guess I'm just old and paranoid. I want so to be able to look kind at of, it. You kind of have a mechanical background, right? Correct. Correct. <laughs> nice. and, and, and I'm worried about, you know, if I can't see it, is it still good? <laughs> right. How's the power on this? I mean, acceleration-wise, etc. Obviously, I'm not looking to rally this. <laughs> Although I think that is kind of their inspiration yeah. that, that they're looking for. So I got to ask, so we have a Monroni here. So um, the final price was for you was 38238 and how was the, the purchasing the process? How did you find the car? How was the, the, that whole process? Well, I chose uh, where I went based off of where Toyota was saying they were shipping their vehicles. And you knew we're you going. wanted a TRD off-road. You I kind knew of I, zoomed in on it. Yeah, I decided I wanted okay. a TRD off-road. Okay. I wanted the little bumper guards okay. for door dings, okay. um, that type of stuff. And that comes from the factory. And it also happened to have a little blackout package on it. And I like that. Did you get a like a discount or anything? Or is this just kind of a brand new vehicle that just showed up? The, a little discount. Okay. okay. A, li a little bit. You can't expect much with something that's absolutely brand new. I reserved it before it even showed up. So, is it fair to say, do you love your new ride or do you hate it? <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. Okay. With the little tow hook thing. Uh, the tow hook. Either you or I or somebody will come up with a solution. <laughs> Right. There must be a solution for this, right? Right. And the only one so far I've, I've, I've heard tossed around 
was putting a bull bar on. And I don't know how I feel about that because okay. of crumple zones. Maybe, you know, worst comes to worst, drill a hole and put a grommet in it and call it, call it, it a day. <laughs> nice. So would you do this again? Which, if you're looking for a crossover, would you pick this one again? Yes. Nice. Yes, absolutely. Uh, everything I've seen so far on the market uh, to compare it to and my past history with Toyotas, I jump all over it again. Pretty happy. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming out. All right. Thank you. All right. And guys, as always, you can go back to tflcar.com for my news, use and real world, actual real world uh, car reviews. And don't forget on TFL Now channel, we have our live show Mondays and Fridays at noon Pacific and 3 p.m. Eastern. Thank you very much.